She was determined to beat the unbeatable opponent. You have to train and study and so I was studying and I was studying and I would, I would watch film and I would translate her interviews from Japanese to English and I was trying to find weaknesses. Meet the woman who wrestled her way to America's first Olympic gold medal. Ah, uh, it's so much emotion and no emotion at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like my head was full and blank at the same time. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Here's a look at this week's top five stories from Studio 5. For number five, we head to Utah and BYU TV for Christmas Under the Stars. Grammy winners Amy Grant and Michael W. Smith take to the Capitol Theater stage for this special concert performance and a little help from the voice winner, Jordan Smith. For number four, we head to Fort Worth, Texas and an emotional reunion video. A Sudanese family separated four years ago with the pregnant wife and two young children resettling in the United States, but the husband and father stuck in a refugee camp until now. With a little help from Fort Worth's Village Church, the tearful reunion ended with dad falling to his knees. Our We head to the White House for number three. Everybody on this stage has touched me in a very powerful personal way. The president honored 21 famous Americans with the country's highest civilian honor, the Medal of Freedom. Ellen DeGeneres, Tom Hanks, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Michael Jordan, Bill Gates, Robert De Niro. There were the musicians, Diana Ross, still reigning supreme, her trademark beauty, and her hair. Bruce Springsteen, honored too. I am the president, he is the boss. <laughs> At number two. Last Christmas, Dolly Parton's coat of many colors touched the hearts of millions. On November 30th, witness the next chapter of her true life story. What kind of man can't give his family a Christmas? I'm doing what I think is best for this family. Hard to believe that Dolly Parton, icon, country music singer, actress, came from such humble beginnings. Well, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do the show, because people like me have to come from somewhere. This is going to be a most blessed Christmas. Dolly Parton's Christmas of Many Colors, Wednesday, November 30th on NBC. And finally, number one, this 10-second clip from an old Pastor Shirley Caesar gospel recording. I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits, you name it! Is climbing the hip-hop charts today with a remix and a viral sensation called the You Name It Challenge. Now, Mama, you know everybody around the world is listening to you talking about greens, beans, tomatoes, potatoes. Have you, have you heard it or seen it? Yes, I have. I have a dog in the middle of the ocean. So you've seen the You Name It channel? Oh, yes. <laughs> Got green beans, potatoes, tomatoes, hogs, balls. I get all that. And whatever we're able to glean from this, we want to be a blessing to St. Jude. And my heart, nice. my heart is Haiti. And uh, money is realized. I want to, I want to bless Haiti. And I want to be a blessing to St. Jude. Mm. And a blessing. Well, Ephraim is back with us today. It's welcome. Thank uh, you. Welcome, welcome. Good welcome. to be back. Let's kick off with that Sudanese reunion. Uh -huh. That one is, is just so uh -huh. gripping. <laughs> you see that father fall to his knees oh, and just give God man. glory. I tell you, trapped in a, a refugee camp for four years, really thinking you're not going to see your children again. I'm a dad. You're a dad. Just imagine the brief time that you're away from your young children. And four years. But a church the Village Church in Fort Worth, Texas, came alongside the mom when she relocated. She was pregnant with a child he hadn't seen until now. And she also had two children with her already. Uh, and they did all they could to make her feel at home, but have spent the last four years trying to figure out how do we get dad 
back how, with how his family. How did they figure it out? How, uh, it took, a, it took a, <laughs> a lot of work. I mean, the church now has actually a uh, hundred trained and vetted volunteers to work with refugees oh, really? uh, in that area. Uh, they've really taken on the mission very well. So this well. isn't just no, one and done. No, this is no, this is this. It ongoing. started, yeah, it started with two ministers' wives. When they heard about this woman's story, they came alongside her and then realized, you know, number one, this is a calling, mm -hmm. but it's bigger than this, just this one woman. We have to be the, the hands and feet of Jesus for many and from those two, now more than 100 working on a regular basis, volunteering, and they have regular coat drives and things to help those people. It's such a beautiful story. I want to say more than 300,000 people have at least watched that video. And literally, I've watched it several times. You tear up every, yeah, every time, single time. Because the emotion is just so mm. overwhelming. Absolutely. And you put yourself in that position and go, okay, yeah. what would I do? Absolutely. Absolutely. And then you put yourself in the position of, how can I help? How, how, can, I, how can I be part of this? Indeed. Do you think there's any hope for peace in Sudan? <sighs> it's one you just, I just, ugh. It gets more frightening the, the, the longer you wait. Of course, we pray, pray and hope that that's going to happen. But it's, it's a, it's I thought with the partition, I thought with Southern Sudan, yeah, I, yeah. I thought there was going to be hope. And, and it just seems to be intractable. And, and you look at the history of it, goodness gracious, it goes back to like the 1860s, oh, 1870s. And, I know. It's not um, we continue to we pray, can pray. And, and embrace those who make it out. Uh, and certainly embrace reuniting those families um, with things like that. That's just amazing. Okay. Well, Shirley Caesar. <laughs> I mean, Shirley she's, Caesar. She's, she's talking. She's rapping, <laughs> which I find amazing, <laughs> about food. I know. And the funny thing, uh, two things about that. Shirley Caesar can cook, but I spent time with Shirley Caesar, interviewed Shirley Caesar. Shirley Caesar is not a fan of cooking. And wow. when asked about, really? are you cooking greens, beans, potatoes for Thanksgiving? And she said, I ain't cooking nothing. <laughs> 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 and those were her words. I'm not cooking anything. I stopped cooking a long time ago. She wow. will take you to the best restaurants in the Raleigh, North Carolina area where, she, where she's so she from. she goes out for Thanksgiving. Yes, she goes Let out. somebody else And when she that. walks in, they know exactly who she is. They take her to her table. She doesn't even have to order. They know exactly what to bring her uh, because she is <laughs> such a frequent guest. <laughs> so she's not planning on cooking, but literally that clip has gone viral. They've put a hip-hop beat to it. As you see there, people are dancing. Uh, but it was in that part, she was actually just telling a story, but that has gone viral. We had Donnie McClurkin here a couple of days ago, and they're friends, so I had to ask him, have you heard this? And he said, you know, here she is, almost 80, and still, again and again, resurfacing around the world. All right. Well, let's <laughs> stick with singers and go to Dolly Parton. Oh, my. Uh, I've got to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. People like me have got to come from somewhere. <laughs> I, know. I love that line. It's a great line, mm -hmm. and I, I think it shows that anybody... Mm -hmm. If 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 you just say okay, uh, I'm I'm willing. Yes, anybody absolutely. can go. Absolutely, you make yourself available to God. And Dolly Parton, for all that she's done, is always quick to say, when a line comes from her, she she jokes. She goes every time you know I write a song and this line comes out, I go you know high five Lord because I, I, that didn't come from me. She gives all credit to God, and that's one of the reasons that she has got actually a four movie deal with NBC four wow. movie deal, all of these really faith-based films because she wants people to see the faith that anchored her life. And if you've seen Code of Many Colors, uh, the first film, it's powerful and beautifully told. That little girl has got Dolly Parton nailed, uh, what you would imagine a Dolly Parton kid to be. Uh, and this one, the Dolly Parton or the, Co the Colors of Christmas that's coming out next week, it's also powerful, compelling, um, a perfect Christmas story, and it'll be nice to jumpstart the season. You know, I, you, you think you've followed her career, mm -hmm. at least I thought, and then I discovered the sheer number of songs that oh, she has written. 3,000 And you just go, wait a minute, I didn't, I didn't know that. No, no, I, 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 I had no clue. And we always had to be reminded, Whitney Houston gets credit for I Will Always Love You, 
That is Dolly, Dolly Parton's, Parton's song. song right. <laughs> and this, there's a story behind that song. Uh, and when she said, you know, she talking to her, she has written more than 3,000 songs. How do you keep track of that? I know, I, I know, know, I know. She's, she's got a good team keeping <laughs> you know, her on track, I tell you. you. Know, I start to scratch my head and go, when, when do I start writing? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know. You know it's, <laughs> yeah, but the amazing creativity and then the realization it all came from God. And Absolutely. the acknowledgement. Absolutely. And let's give God glory yeah. for what he's done for a, a little gr girl who grew up in very hard circumstances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the, the fear yeah. of God instilled in her. She often jokes that uh, she had a grandfather who was a preacher and he, she said he, he could preach hell so hot I could feel it. So <laughs> she wants to stay out of there and away from it. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to President Obama. He's on his way out. Yes. But at the same time, here he is giving out medals of freedom and one last time one last time he has actually given out are more are you sure this is the last time <laughs> you've got two months i think we're done does he have a christmas surprise waiting for i think we're done he has given out more than any other president um and i guess it's one of the perks of the presidency you get to honor those people who've influenced your life mm -hmm. and you could see when you watch the ceremony um he got a real kick out of being able to honor Michael Jordan, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who he could barely <laughs> reach when he put the, the, the medal around his neck. Uh, but icons, as you see, yeah. 21 of them. Well, they're all deserving. I Absolutely. mean, you look at the list and, and you go, these are people that have had a huge impact on America, American culture, mm -hmm. uh, and have enriched our lives. Yeah. And so hats off to all of them. Absolutely. Uh, and maybe he's got some more <laughs> if, he, yeah. if he pulls if that off. like this class, then <laughs> go for it. That's a great class to be in. Well, if you enjoyed our conversation today, you'll want to watch more episodes of Ephraim's weekly show. It's called Studio 5. You can check it out on Roku, Apple TV, or you can go to our website, cbn.com slash studio five, and you can get caught up on all the latest trending things. Thank you. Well, coming up, as a boy, his life was changed while watching Superbook. He's now grown, but has never forgotten the impact of that change. And he's using his experience to help others find out how when we return. Well, Andre was an orphan. And like many orphans, he didn't understand his purpose. It wasn't until many years later that he realized his struggles were an opportunity to help other people. The country of Kyrgyzstan in Central Asia is well known for its breathtaking beauty. Tourists flock here to see majestic mountains and crystal blue lakes. But many of the people here can enjoy the scenery because they're forced to neighboring countries to find work. The children they leave behind fill state orphanages, known for child abuse and corruption. Andre was an orphan here, but he has a brighter story to tell, all because he saw a program called Superbook. They were telling us about Jesus. At that moment, when I watched this cartoon for the first time, I couldn't explain what was happening inside of my heart. But it seemed to me that I met a friend who loves me and will never betray me and stay with me. Hope came into my life, and I finally had a desire to live and understood that I wasn't alone. When Andre left the orphanage, he left with a dream, to build a loving home for abandoned children where Superbook could be seen every day. Years later, Andre's dream came true. He helped build this children's home in Kyrgyzstan that partners with CBN's Orphan's Promise. My main goal and greatest desire is to give them love and care and tell them that they are not alone and God loves them. The program that changed Andre's life is now changing the lives of the children he loves. The miracles can come true, and Jesus can help any minute. I cried to Lord because Jesus suffered so much for all of us, for me and all other people. I thank everyone that created Superbook. I thank countless children watching it in the past and today were saved thanks to this message. So thank you very much again 
and may God bless you and your ministry. Superbook, it's changing lives. It did in its first uh, itineration, if, if you will. Back in 1984, it became one of the best-selling uh, cartoons of all time. And we estimate it was watched by over 500 million people uh, around the world. It got translated into a lot of different languages. And here it was being broadcast in Russian, and an orphan saw it years ago, back in the 1990s, and decided to change his life. He decided to believe that there was a Savior. That's what happens when children get the stories of the Bible. They understand it, and they understand it on a very deep level. And the Word of God never returns void. So we've got a brand new version of Superbook. It's cutting edge technology. It's uh, entertaining. Uh, children love to watch it. And you can be a part of sending the stories of the Bible to the children of the world. Right now, we're in 42 languages on, on our way to our goal of 50 languages uh, with season one and then season two. And there's a broadcast map. And just, just imagine saying, I'm a part of that. I can be a part of that. I can be a part of sending the stories of the Bible around the world in languages that children can understand. If you want to do that, join the Superbook DVD Club. And for a gift of $25 or more, we'll send you the latest episode, which is all about King Solomon. We'll send you more than just one copy. We'll send you three copies so you can share it with your family. You can share it with your church. You can be a part of sharing these wonderful stories. And then every time a new episode comes out, you'll be first to get it. We'll ship you not one copy. We'll ship you three copies of the DVD. Then we'll unlock for you season one and two on streaming. So any device, uh, tablet, smartphone, smart televisions, you'll be able to stream these wonderful stories into your home so the children in your family can be a part of it and have these wonderful stories. If you want to do it, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000, and just say, I want to join the Superbook DVD Club. It's just $25, and you can be a part of it. Well, up next, she became the first U.S. woman's freestyle wrestler to ever win a gold medal. And I'm like, wow, normal people really do win gold medals. It's not some secret club that you have to be in. You don't have to be special. Find out how she did it when we return. Well, oftentimes, an athlete's identity is wrapped up in their performance. A win means I'm good enough, and a loss means I don't measure up. Well, Helen Maroulis wanted to be the best, competing against the world's greatest athletes. In the summer 2016 Olympics, she was about to give Helen the full measure of her worth. Only Helen realized something about herself that had been true all along. CBN special correspondent Mo Isom has the story. I brought all my flaws on that podium when I stepped up. All the flaws in my wrestling are still there. You can still get a gold medal with all that. On the outside, people might view me differently because now they know I have a gold medal. That, that might change their view of me, but I'm like, God, I'm like, I'm not different. I was gold medal worthy this whole time because I don't feel any different. This didn't change me. This didn't add something. My name is Helen Maroulis, and God made me enough. Take us back to what really drew you into wrestling and, you know, that journey there. I started wrestling when I was seven years old, actually in this room. Oh, <laughs> um, this is where, you know, the Beginners Kids Club started, and my brother had just joined, and there weren't enough kids on the team, so he wasn't going to have a partner, and instead of you know, him having to quit and come back next year. My mom just told me to take my shoes off and to jump in there and... And you're you the know. only girl at this time, correct? Yeah. So you're seven years old, you jump in the ring, you compete. I'm assuming you won because you kept only wrestling. match I won all year. <laughs> okay, so then you lost the rest of yep, the year. Yeah, I was one in 30. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's kind of yeah. awesome. That you can say is an Olympian with pride. Yeah. I started and I was one in 30. But you won the one that was important. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the gold medal match <laughs> because I know there's a, a history there in who you were competing against. Here's this woman 
that's never lost in the last 16 years at a World or Olympic stage. So you know Jeez. that if you're gonna do it at this weight class, like she will be there. So you just, you can't ignore that fact. You have to train and study and so, I was studying and I was studying and I would, I would watch film and I would translate her interviews from Japanese to English and I was trying to find weaknesses. I'm like, yeah, God, when I find the weakness, then boom, I'll train for that specific thing and I can capitalize on it. It was like I wasn't finding any. Yeah. And I felt like God was like, instead of trying to bring someone down to a level you feel like you can reach, why don't you just respect them for where they are and try and surpass that level? So you stepped onto the mat with her yeah. in Rio yeah. for the gold medal match. What was running through your head? What was running through <laughs> your heart even? I mean, yeah. were you in conversation with God even then? What oh, was really yeah. going on? The, the whole day, the whole day, all I was saying was, Christ is in me, I'm enough. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'd spent, you know, four years just studying and preparing and so badly wanting to wrestle this girl. And mm -hmm. I was like, I know she's gonna retire, so, you know, if I don't wrestle her now, I spent all this time. And so for me, when I got to wrestle her, I felt like that was God, you know, it's like, here's your gift to you. You yeah. wanted to wrestle her, you worked for it. Here you go, enjoy it. Like you asked for it, here it is. Then you win, time <laughs> expires, it's four to one. You have a decisive victory. I feel like if I were in those shoes, I probably wouldn't even be able to process what was going through my mind in that <laughs> moment. Didn't. But what, after all that you've put into it, after all God's taught you, after the things He's broken in you to rebuild in you, this whole journey, and you have the gold around your neck on the podium, take us there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, it's so much emotion and no emotion at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like my head was full and blank at the same time. And I just remember, it was like I was seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old, 10-year-old Helen all over again. You know, like, it was like I got to remember every single year on the journey. And I was like, God, me? Really? Like, like me? Like, little old Helen? Like, what? <laughs> I'm not this, you know? And, and I'm like, wow, normal people really do win gold medals. Like, it's not, you know, it's not some secret club that you have to be in. You don't have to be special. Yeah. Like, this is so cool. <laughs> On the outside, people might view me differently because now they know I have a gold medal. That, that might change their view of me, but I'm like, God, I'm like, I'm not different. This is yeah. awesome. It was, I was like, I really was enough before and I really am enough now. I love Helen's story because she says, ordinary people just like me win the gold. When you're hooked up with God, then suddenly all things become possible. He opens your vision to see the greatness that he has put within you. Why does he do that? It seems to, to be a mystery, but the Bible says it gives him great pleasure, that we actually give him great pleasure. If you're a parent, you know about that. You know that when you see your children do things, uh, I mean, the first time they speak, the first time they walk, the first time they go to school, all of these things, bring you incredible pleasure. What's the difference? How, how do ordinary people become great? Well, here's a key, it's from Acts chapter four. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. Here is Peter and John. They're apostles. We put them up on a pedestal. Uh, we somehow think that they're special and they're a whole lot better than us. But you need to realize at the time, uh, they were fishermen. They were ordinary men. Uh, they weren't schooled. Uh, and here they were brave and they extended the healing power of God to a crippled man. And that courage, the courage to stand up, and the key, absolute key to it, is they had been with Jesus. And if you take that same key, you'll have the same result. Here's a word to encourage you. 
Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Keep that in mind that you're here so that God can get all the glory. God bless you. We'll see you again.